We just wrapped up an almost flawless lambing season. Almost. So a lot of shepherds will say that they stress most over lambing season, but for me, it's not been the most stressful time. In fact, I can think of many other times of the year that are more stressful with sheep than lambing season. We just don't have that problem here at the High Mountain Homestead, and I think part of that goes to realizing I've had a history of very good lambing seasons, and this lambing season was no different. So I wanted to do a quick video and talk about our lambing season, show you the lambs, but also talk about really what makes for a good lambing season. How do you, how do you get it to be an effortless time of year for you? And if you're new to the channel, welcome. At the High Mountain Homestead, we practice regenerative agriculture on a small scale. We are all about better soil, better plants, and better animals. And now, let's start talking about sheep and lambs. So this lambing season, we started off with five ewes. Three of them were year-old ewes, and obviously first-time moms. And two of them were our ewes that we brought with us from Utah. They are amazing stock. They are very classically big bone dorpers. Here's one right here on the left. And then there's another one over to the right with one of her lambs. And both of them twinned, which we were super happy with. Our first time moms gave singles. Uh, all of them gave rams, which is great. And out of our two long time ewes, they both twinned for us. And out of those twins, we got three ewes and one ram. And I'm gonna register all four of those sheep. All four of them are already spoken for. They are amazing sheep. I am pretty sure Yep, these are the twins from that mom over there on the right. Just amazing, amazing lambs. So this year, we only watched two of the five births. The other three, we woke up in the morning and saw that we had new sheep on the pasture. So that was really awesome. We were really lucky to have that. In fact, these two, <laughs> these two, uh, we watched uh, their birth happen and that was a great birth. So we lambed entirely on pasture, um, sort of, not this exact pasture. Uh, most of it was actually done in our front lawn because uh, just timing. Things never worked the way that you wanted to, but we had good front lawn. So bam, we put the sheep out there with some, <clears throat> with some electric fence and they did quite fine out on the, out on the front lawn lambing there. Okay, so really there are two major things I want to cover on this video that make for a good lambing season. Number one has got to be letting sheep lamb on pasture. If you look at how sheep have functioned for thousands of years, they've been lambing on pasture. I don't believe that a barn is the best circumstance for sheep to be lambing. Uh, we did our first lambing when I was a new shepherd uh, in a barn. We, we gave our sheep like two feet of hay, uh, each one of our ewes had like 40 or 50 square feet all to herself. Um, it was a really nice setup for them. And hey, we had a good lambing experience, but I think that it was overkill. Uh, but I could do that. I only had two ewes at that time. Uh, now that we have a little bit more, and for all the other people that have way more than I do, pasture lambing really seems to make sense. And if you think about it, it's, it's cleaner on pasture, provided you're moving your sheep frequently it's going to be a much cleaner experience. And when I say pasture, I mean outdoor. I mean not in a barn, okay? So they're actually on pretty good pasture right now, but um, some of my sheep, just due to the, the way I was rotating them at that time, they were on kind of like a wood chip area that we plan to have for our pigs. Um, we, we haven't had pigs there yet, so it was a very clean area, but I'd still call that pasture. Uh, a lot more wood chips than grass, but hey, not in a barn, which was, which was really good. Now, something that I was super skeptical about, because a lot of people say, yeah, let them lamb on pasture. And something that I was skeptical about is, well, how do you catch the lamb? Because your lamb has to, uh, you, you do the iodine dip. At least we dip, you know, the umbilical cord in iodine shortly after birth. And I had just thought, oh, well, if they're not pinned up, they're just gonna run away from me. Then I remembered that they're a newborn baby and they're not really running. Now, hey, if they're a week old, yeah, they're gonna be running away from you, but by that point, the iodine dip doesn't matter anymore. You really wanna do that within the first few hours if you can, um, immediately if you can. So uh, I learned that they don't run away. They're just little babies. You just swoop them up, iodine dip, lift them up, lift them back, put them back down, let mom keep cleaning them up. 
So another reason why I like pasture for sheep is that it keeps the ewes busy. I feel like it would be miserable to just wait for your hay and have nothing to do. So anyway, I like to give them uh, grass. I like to, you know, give them really rich hay up until the last little bit and then put them on pasture. And I supplement with hay, but I like to give them, you know, as much grass as possible. Just keep them moving around and keep them ruminating. So another point for pasture. Now the big zinger if you're going to lamb on pasture is you need to make sure that your sheep have an area that they can you know get shelter from the rain. Shade is is great too and we've got plenty of shade here which is awesome but these pine trees don't really shelter them from the rain so what we do is we've just got four t-posts every time I move them I just move these t-posts um, I clip this tarp to it the whole setup costs I think like 60 bucks it's very mobile, very inexpensive, very versatile, uh, but it keeps them dry. Definitely want a place for them to find shelter. If you've got a ewe that won't find shelter during that time, that's why people lock up ewes in a barn. But if you have a ewe that knows what she's doing, she's gonna find shelter in the rain. You want them to lamb in a dry environment. Dry matters a lot more than warm. We had our lamb, you know, we're in North Carolina and it's April right now. You know, the nights that we had lambs, uh, we, we had sub-freezing temperatures. So, um, and hey, there are people with much worse than just sub-freezing temperatures. But I don't worry too much about, you know, in the high 20s, low 30s uh, lambing, provided they can stay dry. Okay, the second big thing that I wanted to talk about today is pulling lambs. We did have to pull a lamb. Uh, it was it was from this gal. Um this was one of my sheep that I'm not super impressed with. Um, I, I made kind of a, I made kind of an impulse buy, and you know she's full blood. She's a fine sheep, but um, well, she's not fine. And it's, but it's not her fault. She, uh, her management just wasn't super great before coming to me. But being on a grass-fed diet, she has really, uh, she has fattened up, in a good way. She's really muscled up in a good way. On this grass-fed diet that I had her on, she was on a very grain-fed diet before, which is what I want to talk about. So, why do you have to pull a sheep? There are essentially two reasons. Reason number one is the ewe is too tired. And that could be for a number of reasons. Um, it could be a complicated, you know, alignment of the lamb inside of her. She's been pushing for too long, so she's just tired. Or it could be because she is sick, which is what the case was with this girl. I could tell that in the days leading up that she she had worms like she was looking very emaciated while we it was to the point to where I was wondering if she was even pregnant still but uh, anyway so she she passed the pre-birth and she had half half of this lamb fallen out of her for like 20 minutes um, and then we came out and made the pull the point is is that she was sick uh, and she was just out of energy so she passed that lamb um, I gave her some cydectin right after that to deworm her. And uh, I did put out, you know, some pellets, alfalfa pellets and stuff for, for her to just get some easy nutrition. And she seems to be doing fine now. But that brings me to, to what I wanted to say is why do you have to pull a lamb? Reason number one, the mom's tired, which could be caused from sickness, which could be caused from malnutrition. Number two is that the lamb is too big. And that can also come from malnutrition, AKA sheep that have a full grain diet. Now, I really don't recommend feeding pregnant ewes grain um, as their main dietary source. Every couple of weeks, I'll give my sheep, you know, some soaked oats with some, uh, like, kelp or minerals or apple cider vinegar in there just to kind of give them a, a healthy treat and uh, to give them some extra calories. But it's not the cornerstone of their diet. It's a treat, and it's a tool for me. When I need them to move, they can expect grain, which is not even every week. Um, and it's very, very little amount. So, you know, if some people use grain, that's okay. Like, I use a little bit of it too. But it should not be the calorie source, especially for late-stage pregnant ewes. That is why you're pulling your ewes most of the time. Sorry, pulling lambs. I'll say one last thing with this uh, lamb that we had to pull that really was hard is, and I hope this helps somebody out there, because I had not experienced this before, is that this mom... Uh, you know, we pulled the lamb. She wanted nothing to do with the lamb. And we were thinking, oh, man, this is going to be our first bummer lamb. This is, you know, not great. Um, super sad. He was fall following her around, calling for her. She would just walk away or butt him away. Super sad. 
we draped some afterbirth on him, and uh, she still didn't take him. So that was about 8.30 in the morning, and I say this, if this just helps one more person get perspective to know what to expect, then, then that's great. But she landed at 8.30 in the morning, or I should say we pulled at 8.30 in the morning, and at about 2 p.m. is when she finally passed the rest of her afterbirth. Crazy that it took that long, right? Well, when she finally naturally passed that afterbirth, she went up and started licking him as if he just popped out, even though it had been many hours. And after that, she let him nurse. He, uh, he found milk very easily, and, and we didn't have to intervene. Um, so he, he's not a bottle baby, thank goodness. You being shy behind that tree? Um, you know, he's not, like, he's not going to be anybody's stud ram. He's not a prime specimen, but he's not a bottle baby either, which is always a win. And of course, if you want a good lambing season, don't stress your sheep. Okay, the last month of their pregnancy is not the time to trim hooves. It's not the time to shear them. It's not the time to drench them. It's not the time to bother them for any reason at all, really. Just let them do their thing. Even moving them um, in a stressful way is not ideal. And if you are doing vaccines, you should have already done your, uh, your vaccine. Usually that's done six weeks out. So the last month, don't stress them out. Sheep are already super stressed out animals. They're prey animals, don't add to it. Like everything I talk about at the High Mountain Homestead, this is all trial and error. This is what has worked for me. Not a perfect shepherd, not by a long shot. I've made a lot of mistakes. And if you haven't seen this video of the mistakes that I made in my first two years of keeping sheep, there, there's a lot, there's a lot, ladies and gentlemen, um, a lot to be learned from that. So skip, skip ahead your first two years and watch that video. Thanks for stopping by today. Like, subscribe, do all the YouTube things, and I'll see you guys on the next video.